price. But um, I found it for a little change. I found, I'm just going to get it for 40 bucks and the $30. Feels good to be back on the foam roller, back in the saddle, as we like to say. Today, I went eight miles in the Beacons, the New Balance Beacons. I've been running in this shoe now for, I don't know, about 10 days, approximately, and it's quickly becoming one of my favorite shoes. Uh, I raced on Saturday, the half marathon. Go check that, ra that video out. Essentially, uh, that half marathon was on a tough course. I'm not really sore, maybe a little bit in the upper soleus on the outside on my left leg where my plantar fasciitis is at. But today, uh, I must say, these guys felt amazing. So I went eight miles at 7.30 pace, 7.30 pace. And yesterday I went, uh, what was yesterday? I went seven miles at about 8.20 pace. And the day before that, which was right after the race, on Sunday, I went three miles at 10 minute pace. So right after a race, I'm a big advocate of not sitting around, get out the next day, get out the door and just bop along really slow get the blood flowing, get the muscles loosened up just a little bit, and then get home and stretch, stretch, stretch as much as you can. And then Monday, go a little faster. Tuesday, a little faster. Wednesday, a little faster. And so anyway, that's kind of the progression that I take after a hard race. And then probably, sorry, no, today is Tuesday. Um, probably Thursday, I will go hard again meaning some sort of workout or time trial. I'm not sure yet, so stay tuned. Anyway, I'm excited about these beacons. I'm not as excited about these Brooks Ravenna 9s. Uh, I may have made a mistake with this Brooks Ravenna 9. Stay tuned. I might be returning them. We'll see. We'll see. All right. All right. Later in today's video, I'm going to show you guys the entire running shoe collection, and the reason I'm doing that is because some of you are asking to see, like, how many shoes do I have? What types of shoes do I have? And so I'm going to lay them all out. Once the family is asleep, I'm going to lay them all out on the living room floor and just kind of walk you through the thought process be behind purchasing all these different running shoes. Time to go digging for some shoes. Come on, come on, come on. The running shoe collection. Here they are, folks. This is every single pair of running shoes that I own. And I am definitely not showing you this collection to brag. That is definitely not the case. I'm showing it to you for a couple different reasons. Uh, but remember this gentleman, Abibi Bekele from Ethiopia in 1960? Yeah, he didn't even need shoes to win the Olympic marathon gold medal. We've come a long way since 1960, for the better. I would say for the better. We've got the Vaporfly up here, the 4%. We've got some Pegasus. We've got some Brooks, some, uh, even a Saucony here. I think there's a Hoka over there. Bottom line, I am incredibly grateful for the opportunity to wear different running shoes. Now, a couple people in the, in the comments asked to see all of my running shoes. So this video is for you. I love running. I love running. I just love it. We don't have to buy bicycles. We don't have to buy basketballs 
or swimming goggles or a hockey, all the hockey gear. If you're a hockey player, like, you know, good luck. Like there's so much gear you need for so many other sports. But in running, all we need is running shoes. Isn't that a beautiful thing? And that is the key word of the day. Well, I guess it's two. Running shoes, running shoes. And yes, the question of the day. What is your favorite pair of running shoes, okay? This could be any brand at any point in time. And I believe there's a, a, an old Asics or New Balance or something. It's like coveted, maybe it's Brooks. And it was, it was discontinued in the 90s. And people are always looking for that running shoe. But anyway, what is your favorite running shoe of all time? All right, can you even narrow it down to one? I don't know, that is your challenge for today's video. But I just appreciate the simplicity that we all get to interact with every single day if we choose to get off the couch and go run and put on a pair of running shoes no matter how new or old they might be. And folks, this looks like a lot of running shoes. I realize that, and it is, it is. There's, I didn't count, I should have counted. There's probably about 20 pairs. And essentially, I have an, an emotional attachment to some of these shoes. In fact, I'm just gonna show you one right now. This is a Nike Bill Bowerman track spike from college, from the University of Colorado. This is 12 years old. And guess what? I did a one mile time trial in this shoe about four months ago. And guess what? It still works. It still works, even though it is 12 years old. And so folks, yes, I have a tough time getting rid of running shoes, and maybe you do too. Because guess what? You're out there, you're pounding ground, you're working hard, and you're sweating, blood, sweat, and tears in these shoes. And yeah, it's hard to let go of them sometimes after you put miles and hours into these running shoes. And so again, I am not showing you this collection to brag. I'm showing you this collection to make the point that as runners, we have an incredible gift. The gift is that running is efficient and it's simple. And yes, it's nice to have a watch that's, you know, does GPS. Yes, it is nice to have the latest hydration system or the best sunglasses to keep the sun out of our eyes. But frankly, at the end of the day, I can distinctly remember in high school and in college, true like running in cotton shirts and a pair of running shoes and socks, maybe, no, and socks, and that's it. That's all you needed. And guess what? I had the time of my life. Now I have certainly increased my running gear over time and I think it is important to have the, the essentials for running, including the right running shoe for the particular uh, distance and the particular surface. And a lot of these shoes in this pile are trail running shoes and a lot of these shoes are road running shoes and a couple track shoes. So there's different shoes for different surfaces. As this channel continues to grow, and thank you, by the way, for subscribing. All of you guys, like, the growth is just blowing me away, and I'm going to keep uploading if you keep watching. Sound good? Is that a deal? But I'm excited, based on my 20 years of running experience, to continue to, to, continue to test and reflect and communicate to all of you uh, my thoughts on the performance of different running shoes. So... I'm gonna to continue to per purchase shoes. I'm gonna to continue to wear them and wear them into the ground and pound them into the ground. But uh, most importantly, I wanna to communicate to you the pros and cons of a lot of these shoes that you're seeing right in front of you. And behind every pair of running shoes is a story. And frankly, it's your story. So I wanna just point out two pairs of shoes that uh, really tells a big part of my story here on YouTube. Let's start with the Hoka, right here, this guy, the Hoka Clayton. I bought this Hoka Clayton about 18 months ago, and I love transparency. I love being open with you guys. I'm not always saying that I've been in the best financial position as an adult, and therefore, uh, sometimes you have to make sacrifices. You guys know that. Uh, <laughs> basically, I bought this Hoka Clayton off of Craigslist for $20. In fact, I talked the guy down from $30 down to 
And at the time, he had only put like 15 miles into the shoe and he didn't like them. And so he was selling them on Craigslist and I was in a pinch, you know, didn't have a lot of extra money at the time, 18 months ago. And I said, hey man, let's make a deal. And sure enough, he sold me this pair of shoes for 18 bucks, or sorry, 20 bucks. And essentially that, this pair of shoes, man, got me through about five months of training. And yes, I mixed a couple other shoes into the mix, but it was this Clayton that got me through those tough times. And then fast forward to the present, the Nike Vaporfly 4% Fly Knit, a $250 shoe. So all I'm saying is my story and the progress, the patience, the persistence, the consistency on YouTube has frankly allowed me to go from $20 on Craigslist to this guy. And this guy, I've been able to run so well in, in the 5K, 10K, half marathon, time trials. And all I'm saying, guys, is let's work hard together. Let's keep pushing each other. Let's keep uh, each other accountable to our training on Strava. And I just, uh, <laughs> everything comes full circle and it, it it's just humbling to be able to share my passion for running and running shoes with all of you here on YouTube. So I love you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for supporting this channel, for letting your running friends know about this channel. We're just getting started. You know what I mean? You're picking up what I'm putting down. Oh, gets me going, gets me going. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. We will see you tomorrow.